This video continues to build an alternative aggregate demand aggregate supply model to the one that is shown here. If you haven't seen the video about the aggregate supply curve in this model, you should watch that video first. It will explain to you how we arrive at an aggregate supply model, an aggregate supply curve, which looks like this. The big difference between this and the other model is that on the vertical axis, instead of measuring expenditure, we're measuring price level. So this is more like a traditional supply and demand diagram. Because it is more traditional, we end up having an aggregate demand line, which looks more like the demand line we'll see in a supply and demand diagram. As the price level of goods decreases, people will demand more products. And that leads to a traditional downward sloping aggregate demand curve. In this case, the aggregate demand is AD1, and it leads to a national income level of NY1. Because we're at the low level of national income, and we're in, operating in what we call the Keynesian section of this curve, if you're not sure what that means, you should go back and watch the aggregate supply video, which explains that. An increase in aggregate demand in this section of the curve will lead to an increase in national income. So AD1 increases to AD2. This could, because, could be because of any of the, the elements of aggregate demand increasing. So a reminder that aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So if there's an increase, for example, of investment or an increase in consumer spending, there will be an increase in the level of aggregate demand. In this case, we're moving from AD1 to AD2 and it leads to an increase in national income of NY1 to NY2. We'll notice, however, that the price level has remained the same. Uh, this is because we're operating this part of the supply curve. If aggregate demand moved from AD2 up, until, up to AD3, however, we'll make AD3 here, then we are going to have two things happening. The first thing is that national income will increase and we'll go from NY2 and we'll call this one NY3 but we will also have an increase in price level. So the original price level when we were at AD1 and AD2 the price level was here at P1 but now we have a new price level. So we move from P1 to P2. There's been competition for resources, including, uh, including labour, and this drives up costs. And as a result of these increased costs, businesses are increasing their price. So in this section of the aggregate supply curve, as well as getting an increase in national income, we also get an increase in inflation. If we were at the highest levels of aggregate supply, the level of aggregate demand, when it increases from AD1 to AD2, won't lead to any increase in national income. The reason for that is that businesses physically cannot produce any more than what they already, than what they already are because all resources are being used. And this is when we say the economy is at full employment. Businesses, however, exist to make a profit. And so what will happen is when they see that their, their products are in such great demand, even though they can't produce anymore, they will increase the price. This will also be because there will be increased competition amongst businesses for resources, including uh, competition for labour. So as a result of the increase in aggregate demand at this high level, we will not get an increase in national income, only an increase in price or inflation. And this was a classical view of economics, that government shouldn't intervene to increase aggregate demand because the only effect would be an increase in price level. And we can see that is true at this part of the curve. If you're not sure about the Keynesian and the classical sections of this curve, you should watch the video on aggregate supply that, which explains that.